Hey, let's talk about kitchen stuff. I have a lot of kitchen stuff. You don't need all of it. Let's just talk about the bare essentials that you need in your kitchen. So this video is gonna be just about the basics. I'll do another video about all the other things that I've spent my money on, but we're gonna keep this one nice and simple. Also, I'm gonna give something away at some point in the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Lastly, I'll put links down for anything I talk about down below, just so you have a frame of reference of what I'm talking about, and this is all my personal opinion, but let's get going. Let's start out with a pan. Everybody needs a non-stick pan. My personal opinion, get a medium price pan. Don't get the cheapest one. If you wanna get the most expensive, go at it. Buying a slightly nicer pan, it's gonna last longer, it retains heat better, the non-stick is better, pretty much everything about it is just slightly better. I think also having a cast iron pan just makes life great. Any cast iron pan will do. They'll last you forever if you take care of them. Pots! I'd say you probably need one small pot and one big pot. For a small pot, this is two quarts. That's a pretty good size to get most small things done. For a bigger pot, this is about an eight quart pot. Having this versatility of one small one and one big one will pretty much let you do anything you want. And then kind of a bonus in this category, something that's just nice to have is a Dutch oven. This is made out of cast iron. It's oven safe up to pretty much any temperature. So I'd say this is a great thing to have. They can be kind of expensive. So if you want to forego this one for now, you can. But it's something that I really like using, cook a lot of stuff in here. And so I'd say it's pretty much essential for me. Stainless steel bowls. Uh, I couldn't live without these. These are one of my most essential things in my whole kitchen. They're super easy to work with, super easy to clean. You can get them hot, you can get them cold, you can do whatever you want with them. I'd say that these are absolutely essential. And if you can fit one medium sized bowl, then you can fit a bunch of other bowls. There's like seven in this stack. I use them for everything. They're not that expensive and they're a lot better than using plastic bowls. Stainless steel bowls, couldn't live without them. A cutting board. I only have two rules with cutting boards. One, don't buy a super flimsy plastic one that always bows up and breaks. Those are the worst thing ever. Rule number two is get the right size. You don't want one too small and you don't want one too big. What makes it too small is when you, it's too small and you can't actually use your knife correctly. What makes it too big is when you can't fit it in the sink to actually wash it. That's annoying. The material's kinda up to you. I just use this softer plastic one because it doesn't destroy my knives. I use this one for almost everything. It's also fun to see how long I can spin it on my finger. To go with my cutting board, let's talk about knives. I have a pretty firm opinion about knives. Just buy at least one nice chef's knife. This is an eight inch chef's knife. It was the first nice knife I ever bought five or six years ago. It's in exactly the same shape as when I bought it. These things are built to last. You won't have to replace it if you take care of it. And my opinion is if you have 50, 70, $100 to spend on a block of knives, just take that same money and go buy one nicer knife. If you want to get one that's a little bit smaller also, by all means, having a smaller knife is nice for some situations, but in general, if I had to choose, just having one chef's knife is going to be able to get pretty much anything you want done, and learning how to use this knife for everything is going to help you get better as a cook. A probe thermometer. It doesn't matter if you're just starting in the kitchen or if you're a pro, knowing the temperature of certain things is going to be super helpful. If you are just starting out, Understanding the internal temperature of your meat and what that looks like and how it behaves is gonna be really helpful. If you're a little bit more advanced, you kinda need to know the temperature of things like water if you're baking bread. You need to know the temperature of oil if you're frying things. These range anywhere from pretty cheap to kind of expensive, so as long as it reads relatively accurately and reads pretty quickly, I think you're in the clear. Strainers. This is kind of a fancy strainer. You don't really need one this fancy, but maybe this style, this shape, but maybe closer to this size is going to give you kind of an all-purpose strainer that's gonna allow you to strain everything from sauces to pastas to, I don't know, whatever else you need to strain. I will say for my own personal taste, having a smaller one and a bigger one makes things really nice. Sometimes I just want a smaller thing, but if you had to choose, I would take a medium to larger size strainer because you can do pretty much anything in that. 
A blender, or in this case, an immersion blender. Having a high powered blender is nice, but if you just wanna cover the basics, having an immersion blender is one of the most useful tools in my entire kitchen. I use it more than I use my high powered blender. It's just a lot easier to clean up. It's very convenient, easy to use. And these days, a lot of immersion blenders have interchangeable parts. So I have both a blender and a whisk, and I think this company just came out with one that has a food processor attachment also. So you can bang out three different applications with one appliance. These are much cheaper than their bigger, badder, older brothers, but they're very useful, very convenient. And while we're at it, I've never done a giveaway before, but let's give one of these away. I just think that they're awesome and I accidentally got an extra one. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and comment something down below that you'd, you'd like for me to make in a video. And after like a week, you have a week to do it, I guess. And I'll pick a winner and send you an immersion blender. Slight left turn here, but let's talk about some things that uh, are just super convenient. Number one, a squeeze bottle for your oil. It just gives you a lot more control. It makes a lot less of a mess and you don't have to unscrew and rescrew a cap onto your oil bottle every time you want to use it. These are really handy. Having a little bowl with salt and specifically kosher salt gives you a lot more control in how much salt you use. Being able to feel it, being able to control where it goes and how much comes out of your hands. Any bowl or container will work, but just just being able to use your hands and having it freely accessible so that you always have salt on hand is going to make life much easier. And lastly, fresh cracked pepper just tastes better. A kitchen scale. I think quite obviously having some measuring cups is something that most people have or think that they should have. I don't disagree with that, but having a kitchen scale these days makes a world of difference. If you're going to be doing any baking, pretty much doing anything the other night, I just bought some ground beef to make burgers and I wanted to make sure that my girlfriend and I had the same size burgers. So I used a scale to make sure that they were the same size. I personally write a lot of recipes with scales. So if you're gonna be looking at any of my recipes, definitely get a scale. They're not very expensive and they're super handy. A sheet pan. I'd say just buy this half sheet pan. It's medium sized pan. You can bake pretty much anything you need to on it. If you wanna also get one about half the size, That'll work too. They don't have to be super nice. Just make sure you have one. Having a little container that you can hold next to your stovetop of the gadgets and tools that you use most often, I think is a really nice thing to have and just makes the whole workflow a whole lot nicer. So first things up, vegetable peeler. These are pretty straightforward, but I think they're important. And there's really not much to say about any of these things, but I'm just gonna mention them and maybe say a short word. Kitchen tongs, kitchen tongs, just like having another hand uh, that doesn't burn if things are hot. A whisk, you need a whisk. A little flippy spatula, I would say get one that is metal or silicone, something that you don't have to worry about it melting or anything like that. On the same note of spatulas, let's talk about two more. Having a wooden spatula is going to be really easy for mixing things. It'll be a lot nicer to your pots and pans. It won't scratch them up like metal will. And I just think that they feel nice and they work really well. On the other hand, silicone spatulas are one of my favorite tools in the entire kitchen. It's really easy for cleaning stuff all the way out because of their flexibility and their soft edges. Also, if I'm transferring something from one container to another, it minimizes waste. It lets me get all of my food out of most containers and they're heat resistant up to a very high temperature so you don't have to worry about melting them. Last on the list is graters. If you have a box grater, those work pretty well, but microplanes in general for zesting or finely zesting things is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. I use it for cheese, for zest, for chocolate, for garlic, for ginger, all sorts of different things. I think this is a super useful tool that for me is invaluable. I also have a slightly bigger one for when I need to do potatoes and stuff because I personally don't have a box grater, but box graters are great too. Oven mitts, pretty straightforward. I personally like these kind of silicone oven mitts. If you wanna get the ones that actually have the fingers so that you have better grips, those are also really nice. I just personally don't like the ones that are just like normal cloth material. I don't think that they protect you from the heat as well. And these are a lot easier to clean. This is a bowl scraper. Its real purpose is to be able to get everything out of a bowl, but it's useful for a lot of things. Sometimes I'll use it to clean up crumbs on my countertop. 
You can use it to separate out different things and they're incredibly cheap. I think I bought a pack of 20 of them for like $5. These are amazing and I think everyone could use one. This is another thing that's just kind of nice to have is some sort of brush. I have both a silicone one and one that looks more like a normal paintbrush. I'll put it in the nice to have category. Not an absolute essential, but these aren't something that's super big that's gonna take up a lot of space. They're not expensive and they're really useful when you need them. Parchment paper, and specifically parchment paper that's already pre-cut and flat. Why, you might ask? Because I really hate it when you have the roll of parchment paper and the edges always curl up and nothing lies flat. The other thing about it is just I love parchment paper. I cook with it all the time, I bake with it, I put stuff on it and put it in my freezer so that stuff doesn't stick to it because not very much stuff actually sticks to parchment paper. Last on the list is these little deli containers. They come in basically three different sizes, a cup, a pint, and a quart. They're really nice for storing things. They're heat resistant, microwavable, and a lot of the times you can get them pretty much for free. Sometimes I get takeout food and stuff like this and I just wash them and keep them. They're dishwasher safe. I use these in any nicer restaurant that I've ever worked in. And if you go to a nicer restaurant, you'll see their kitchen filled with these. I've even asked a restaurant if I can just buy them straight up from them and they were happy to do that. I'll look around on the internet and see if there's anywhere else that you can just buy like a small amount and if so, I'll also link that down below. But just having some sort of easy storage system is gonna make life pretty easy for just being a home cook. So that was a real quick crash course in uh, just some real basic kitchen essentials. If you want more information, I can go into depth on any one of these topics and talk for days about it, but I just wanted to try to keep this relatively short and sweet and check back soon because I'm gonna be going through all sorts of different things that I think are really useful if you wanna get more into cooking and you wanna build out your kitchen with all sorts of equipment. Don't forget to comment below with a suggestion for something you'd like to see me cook so that I can possibly send you an immersion blender for free. But until that time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.